So, this is going to be a different kind of sermon today. You know, we have, this is going to be kind of fun. We have different sermons once in a while, but anyway. This one I plan to do on the first Sunday of January, but remember we had all that snow? So we decided to have a Bible study in, instead, and we just had a topic discussion. Well, this is what I planned to preach that Sunday, so I decided to hold on to it, because it's really different. I'm going to warn you right now, it is different, but it's important for me to share this with you. And I needed to share the experience that I had. So anyway, my goal with this sermon is to pump you up. Kind of like, you know, this, you're going to get pumped up. If you lift weights every day, you're going to get pumped up. How many of you like lifting weights? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I did that to get ready for Noah's wedding, <laughs> actually. I wanted to, you know, one shoulder I couldn't, couldn't do because it was just, I needed to have surgery on it and it just wouldn't work. But the other one was fine. And I still like to have shapely arms. <laughs> or, this is another kind of pump. If your, tire, if your bicycle tire is flat, how many of you like to bicycle? I love to bicycle, but if the tire goes flat, then I have to pump it up, right? Well, it's the same thing with our spirits. Sometimes we get a little flat, and we need to pump up our spirits and get energized again. So hopefully this sermon will make you feel pumped up spiritually for yourself and for our church. But first, I want to read a Bible story from Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46, or 47. And it says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, And he will separate the people, one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty? and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothes you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? And he will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, 
but the righteous to eternal life. Well, that's a good story, right? The reason I wanted to open with this story was I have a vision of Deaf International Community Church that we will be helping those in need anywhere they come up, not just one or two times a year, not just to go to hope and faith, but I think any time we see someone in need, we will help them. In our church family, if we find out that someone in our church family needs help, we'll be there. In Princeton Seminary, all of the pastoral, all the pastors live in the metro area. And they send each other emails if they need something, like I need baby clothes, or my folks are in town, I need to borrow a car, and they help each other. It's a wonderful, wonderful system. I borrowed um, the car of another pastoral student, and it was great. It was a wonderful experience. You know, if you need a Christmas tree, and I have two, then I'll give somebody else a Christmas tree. They just share everything, and they don't pay at all. They just use whatever they have. And often, if they're um, if they're cleaning house or updating, then they will put things out on the lawn and just send emails saying, "Hey, I got all this stuff outside. Come and take what you want." And I just love that. It taught me a really good lesson because I think it's really easy that we it's easy for us to be careful with what we have and to kind of hold on to it. But God intends for our possessions to be shared, and that's wonderful. So I hope that, and my vision is, that we will know how to share and help everyone. Everyone that we see, everyone that God sends to us during the day, if that person needs help, that we will stop what we're doing, if we can, and help them. That we will do for each other. That's my vision, at least for Deaf International Community Church. Now, this is my story from November. I, Last November, I was very extremely depressed. And you know, I am never, I'm not a down person. I am quite the opposite, 100% opposite. I tend to be up and all the time, and it takes a whole lot to make me feel down. But in November, I was horribly down. I mean, I had never experienced feeling that way before. Our church didn't have enough money. We didn't have enough help. We were trying to keep our ministry alive. Well, we just had a few people helping us do that. I mean, it was really a bad time for us in November. And then I was on the phone having a meeting with someone, and that person said, look, maybe we just have to accept the fact that we can't maintain. We can't be independent. Maybe we need to go back and be under a hearing church again. And that just took the wind right out of my sails. I hit the floor. I couldn't think straight. I couldn't eat that night. I didn't sleep at all. I was just sick. And, you know, and I was just ready to give up. I thought, we can't give up our independence as a church and go back under a hearing church just because we can't survive. I mean, that, it was like that person had told me that I was drowning. So, like I said, I didn't sleep a wink all night, and in the morning I was supposed to go to class. I'm taking three classes. You know, I've got to keep the, for counseling or for, um, you know, Bible studies or whatever. So I have to take classes each semester. I usually do it, you know, I need that to keep updated on everything. But anyway, at that time I was taking three classes. One was Old Testament, one was Judaic, uh, Judaism, and one was Hebrew. And that morning I was supposed to have gone to the, to the first two classes. But I could not get up. I just felt like I couldn't move. I felt like I could not get ready. I couldn't take a shower. I couldn't eat. I, could, I was just so worn out. I felt like I could not do anything. I just had sworn that I would never go back after a hearing church. And I was just so emotional and I just could not get this off my mind, so I called Al at work and I said, Al, I need to skip class. I need to go to the office and catch up on, I just don't know what we're gonna do with the church. And you know what Al said? He said, Debbie, get up, take a shower, go to class. Everything will be all right. And that made me mad. 
And he knew, I never listened to him anyway, even when I asked his advice. I don't know why I even called him. I guess I wanted somebody to just tell me, yes, your life is over, go ahead and just stay in bed, don't get up, don't shower. That's what I wanted him to say. But he said, Debbie, get up, go shower, and go to class, everything will be okay. And I said, well, what do you know anyway? And hung up on him, I was that upset. So I called him again and I said, hey, I really need to stay home. I need to work in the office and catch up and figure out what we're going to do. Can you believe what the, 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 somebody said we needed to go back under a hearing church? I have got to figure a way out of this. And Al said, get up, take a shower, go to class. I promise you everything will be okay. So I hung up, but I did listen this time. So I took a shower, got dressed, went to class, and I was feeling horrible. I felt like I was just, I had a ton of weight on my shoulders. And I got there and I was early. So I set up the tables and everything so that I was able to lip read well. I got them in a U shape and I was sitting. And I just got everything set and started to go out into the hall um, to the restroom. And you know, when I'm in the hallway walking, I try to avoid people because it's really hard to lip read when I'm walking. So I was walking down the hall and I saw my first instructor. And I tried to hurry to kind of get away from them, but they came up. It's a rabbi. Uh, my instructor was a rabbi, so my instructor came up and um, said good morning. And I said good morning, and then I slowed way down so that the rabbi could go ahead, and the rabbi did, which I was really glad because I was not in a conversational mood this morning. So then the rabbi slowed down, and so I and I had no choice but to catch up with. The rabbi and they said, Hey, tell me about your church. And I was like, What? How did they know about my church? And I said, Well, you know, he, this is a hearing rabbi. I thought he didn't, wouldn't understand anything that I was going to tell him. So what I said was, Well, we're in the desert right now. We are in the desert. Because, you know, Jewish people would understand what that meant. I said, We are in a very dry desert looking toward the promised land. And the promised land to us means having our own building where we can have church and worship any time we want, any way we want. We can have counseling sessions any time. We won't be paying rent. Well, we will be free. But, you know, I mean, we are so limited by finances. That's what the promised land means to us, where we can do all of these ministries. We'll have staff, we'll have a full staff. We'll have donations coming in. We'll be able to meet our needs financially. And that's our promised land. And the rabbi said, yeah, yes, indeed. And went on to class, and I thought, oh, well, I don't think he understands a thing. You know, he doesn't understand being a minority. You know, he's got a temple. He's got security. He's got staff. He's got, yeah, I was really in a sour mood. <laughs> so anyway, the conversation ended. I went and did my thing and then came back into class. I'm going to make sure that I'm following everything, so hold on a second. When I got into class, the class was beginning, and the rabbi said, our discussion this morning is going to focus on the importance for people to have their own place of worship. And he said, and, he, and my Hebrew name is Devorah, D-V-O-R-H. And he says, Devorah just explained to me that her church family is in the desert, and they're looking toward the promised land. And that is the topic of our lesson, about why groups need to have their own buildings to worship in. And I thought, oh my word, God, you are amazing. You know, if I would have missed that class this morning, what if I would have stayed at home depressed, stayed at home in bed depressed? What if I would not have gone? What if Al would, would have said, oh, yes, go ahead and just take a day, you know, just have a pity party, go ahead and just cry your eyes out, eat a whole gallon of ice cream, chocolate if you want, just go ahead and get as fat as you want, just stay home. What if he would have told me that? But no, he said go. And then that was the topic of our class. And he said, Deborah, can you please 
tell your story to the class. So I explained that we were in the desert, that we were a deaf church, and that we pay a monthly rent, and we really can't support ourselves financially. We need fundraising from people because we do a lot of work out in the community, and there's lots of wonderful good work that we do. And we want to do free counseling services to folks who have no money, but we have to pay rent to use the facilities, and so we are very limited. I mean, there's wonderful, there's wonderful nice people. This, they're great here. With the building is a dream. You know, we're not in a. I didn't say we're not in a dining. I didn't say we're not in a dining room, but we're not. We're in a sanctuary, and this is great. But we want our own place, and they all understood. Most of these were uh, Jewish folks, and they were all nodding in agreement and in understanding. And I thought, oh yeah, Jewish people are minorities too. They get us. Because they were all in, a, in agreement, and that led to a discussion, and we talked for two hours on that topic, the importance of having our own place of worship. And what I learned from that class was something the rabbi said. And he said, it's important for us, for us deaf people, as our family, to have an independent building where we can worship, so that we can worship completely as pertains to our culture, and we can stay a uniquely identified group. Because we were created, and it's important that we were created, and it's, we need to have our own, our own place, something that we cannot let go. And the rabbi said, when you build your own building, you can have the same altar, you can have, you know, they wanted to build a temple for God, and God had said, no, you're not able to do that without giving your son. That was the story of Abraham. And God created the world for us to live in, to dwell in. We dwell in the world. And cultural groups, regardless of who they are, I mean, as deaf people, we are a cultural group. We, our buildings are what we give to God. God has put us in the world, and we set up a structure to honor him so that God can have a place to dwell with us. That was the Jewish perspective, and that makes sense for us as deaf people. It's our gift back to God, is to give him a unique place in which to dwell. That's our, our act of duty, to dedicate a building to him and to solidify that relationship and recognize that relationship that we have with God. And that's the importance of setting up or erecting buildings where people can worship. Now once our, you know, if we have our own worship space, we can worship freely as our culture demands. We can do anything we want. We can call the church anything we want. We can worship in any way we want. We can dedicate the building completely to the Lord, to his work. And know that we have built a relationship with him. He has given us and we have given back. You know, every time you, you know, every time somebody gives you something, you want to give them something back, right? That's just normal. So God has given to us, and this would be our gift back to him. But the, when the rabbi was talking about that, it was so powerful. And he said, Deborah, when you build your own deaf church, you are announcing, you, meaning all of us, are announcing to the public that we are here. Isn't that cool? That is huge. I mean, that really pumped me up and let me clue ya. <laughs> you know, I just got excited. I just, oh, I just enjoyed his lecture so much. And he went on and on and explained that when all of you deaf people build your own building, you are announcing to the world, you are telling them, we are here. We are right up there with everyone else. We are not under anyone at all. We are in equal footing. The building itself will give us equality. That's what having our own building will mean. 
You know, I really have known that all along, but I couldn't put it into words. I couldn't put, put into words why it was so important for us to have our own building, but now I can. Because we are a unique group of individuals, a unique group of people. God has put us in this world, and by us making a building, that is our gift back to God, and really is a concrete visual statement of our relationship with God that the world can see. And the world will see that we are here, and who we are is the deaf community. And we can do that. It's just a beautiful, beautiful vision. If you agree, please say yes and amen. Are you feeling pumped up at least a little bit? Come on, I want us to get pumped up about this. And even more. Oh my gosh, after class, this God of ours. One of my fellow students said, hey, do you have a minute? Can, can I sit down and talk with you? I'm a fundraiser, and I've got some ideas for you. And I was like, what? You would take the time to sit down and talk with me? Yes, of course. So we went down to the cafeteria, and I bought her lunch, and we stayed there for two hours. We could have gone longer, but the Hebrew students were coming, the Hebrew school students were coming in, and it was too noisy, and I couldn't look for it anymore, so we had to call the meeting off. But we sat there for two hours, and she gave me two hours of her time. And she was a fundraiser, remember? She said, Deb, tell your people that you can do it. And you will have your own building. You will. I guarantee it. And I said, you guarantee it? So I was like, woohoo, she guarantees it? She goes, no, I promise you will have your own building. You can stay independent. You can never Never, ever let people tell you you have to go backwards, that you have to go back to being affiliated with the hearing church. You will have your building. You must stay positive. You must look forward and don't look back. Don't do it. That's what she said. And she said, you tell your congregation that if they're down and they feel they can't get support, that that's not a fact. That's not true. You tell them that every dollar they put in that offering plate keeps us going, keeps us away from the basement, that keeps us out from under a hearing church. And she used the word basement. She said, every dime you donated to Deaf International Community Church keeps us out of the basement. And it keeps us away from that relationship. Every time you help find a person who can share our dream and our vision, anytime you find a funding sponsor, that keeps us out of the basement of the hearing church. Tell them, she said, tell your people to share your stories. Every time you share your story, share it daily. Every time you share our dream, you never know, it might, we might just share it to the right person that will impact them to help us build our building. You know, this is a Methodist church here. And I know they told me that there were a couple of folks that were going to be building, and there were lots of people building churches around, but the person said, you know, annually you have to tell your story and you have to share your dream with people every day, and that dream will get passed around. Because the more you share, the more people will share for you, and they'll help you make that dream come true. You know, Indian Creek Church started with one member working at the garden, and the pastor said that they had a dream and said, come on, I want to build this church. And you know, that church is huge now. It's gigantic. And that got started because they were sharing their dream, and we need to share our dream with everyone we meet. I mean, if you're not in your own building yet, it means that you haven't sh shared your dream with the right person. And when the right person is out there somewhere, but that person hasn't heard our story yet. So she said to share our vision and our dream and our story with everyone we meet. She gave us some ideas of who to contact that we could maybe find some money to start doing the building. She said, share our dream and our visions with everyone. She also said, 
I said, you know, I don't really hate to call asking for money. I just despise doing that. Uh, I just hate that part of the part of the job, and Jacob does too. But anyway, he gave that to me, so Al is going to have to take over the phone calling. <laughs> but the fundraiser said, hey, tell your people not to be embarrassed. Tell them that it's exciting. You should be excited to call people. Be excited. Be pumped up as you tell them your story. And people with money want to know a good place and a good cause. Then they will donate monthly. People like to do that. I said, really? She said, yes. People with money want to know where the action is. They want to know a vibrant organization. And if they find one that's vital, they will sponsor. But you just need to ask. And she told me to remind all of us not to feel trapped and think that we have to do the same old thing that we've done every day. You know, as the deaf community, we can think outside of the box. We can do anything we want to. And she told me to remind all of us that our building will be one that we can dedicate to God. It, when we have it, we can be free to worship any time in any way we want. We can have counseling sessions any time we want. We can have meetings any time we want. We can have parties any time we want. We won't be limited to four times a year. We can have weddings, we can have baby showers, we can have graduation celebrations, we can have celebrations any time we want. We can have youth meetings at any time, and we won't have to pay. We can have programs any time. We can have blessings and celebrate holidays at any time. We can set up our own Deaf Scout group. We can have a Deaf coat closet so that Deaf people can come and, and receive clothing and things that they need. It would be so nice to have a Deaf cloak closet just for Deaf people. We can have weddings here. We can have receptions in that building. We can have dances if we wanted. We could rent out office space for other Deaf organizations or interpreter agencies within our church building. Because that we need to have a multi-use building that could be used for a church as well as a deaf seminary. It would be nice to have three buildings if we could. And we can also rent available space to other deaf-related agencies. You know, we could have a deaf counseling agency there. So that's a vision. We could have a place for videography. We could have a missionary headquarters. We can have training for people to, who want to become pastors. I mean, we've got a laundry list of things that we can do if we had our own building. We could do anything we wanted if we had our own space. And she said, remind your people why the building is so important. You know, and if we have that Jim Bob Duggar to come and do fundraising for us, we might actually get our building. Anyway, when I got home after class that morning, I was pumped. I mean, I was so high, I couldn't sit down for a week. You know, and Noah and Alyssa were there, I said, I've got something telling you, you're not going to believe what, went, what just happened in class. And I don't want you to talk, you just listen, I'm doing all the talking right now, because Noah likes to interrupt. So he didn't. And he said, wow, our own building, our altar, our own design to showcase our culture and tell the story of our people. We are a people, folks. You know, when I took my MMU students to go to the uh, Jewish Community Center, we did some Jewish dances for a couple of hours. And they said, tell, the dances tell your story. They tell the story of being in the desert and of coming into the promised land and the commandments. They tell the story. And Noah said, our church design will also tell the story of our people. He said, we'll have a new type of altar that demonstrates the uniqueness of our culture. The art in the building will give people a glimpse of the deaf community. It will be wonderful. 
It will be awesome. What did you say, John? Oh, it will be. It will be burnt gorgeous. It will be beautiful. It will be deaf. It will show the beauty of deaf culture and deaf people and the deaf experience. When people come in, they will know our story. They'll know our history. They'll know our present. And they'll know our future. Get pumped, folks. We need our own building for so many, many reasons. And our work will be dedicated, and our commitment will help us get it. Now, I'm not asking all of you to do more than what it can be expected. I'm asking all of us to do our part. That's all. Not more than we can handle. I just want each of us to do our part. And to stay positive and know that together we can get to the place of rest. You know, a building needs so much more than we realized. You know, we have to meet, I did not realize, but it does mean that we can tell the world our story. And you can have your own building. You need to make that decision individually that you will have, that we will have our own building we won't be having to rent to other people. You know, I know you all want your children to have their own church. I know we have CODA and deaf children in our congregation, and they will be the next generation to inhabit this building. And it will be there. It will be a place dedicated to God for the ages, and a place for God to dwell. And it will tell the story of our people, the deaf people.